Every job has its pros and cons, right? Some are better than others. You probably think marine biology is one of the good ones. It's a dream job. But what if I told you being a marine biologist is not a run-of-the-mill job for a reason? What if I told you that it's only really crazy people who are obsessed with the ocean that make it as a marine biologist? And there's a lot of shitty stuff associated with the job. Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tully's Marine Tales. Today we're doing a vlog. <laughs> it's been absolutely ages since we last done one of these, but we're coming up to fieldwork season now. So I really, really want to get back into the vlogging side of this channel. Um, let me know down in the comments below if you enjoy this video, if it's more of the type of content that you want to see, because yeah, I just want to have a bit of fun and, and do some vlogging and do some fun stuff again. So today we're at my field site here on the beautiful Puerkis Lagoon or the Kierbohms Lagoon, should I say, in Plettenberg Bay, the town where I live. So this is actually an estuary where sort of the river meets the sea. Down here where I am, it's pretty salty. So it's kind of like sea habitat, basically. Um, and I have spent the past two and a half years studying this ecosystem, looking for stingrays, trying to understand when and where they occur in here, why they occur in here, what the behavior is. So I'm fairly familiar with this ecosystem. And <laughs> this is one of the great parts about being a marine biologist. I get to come spend my days in a beautiful place like this. I get to be in the field. I get to collect information. I get to have a bit of fun. I get to go on a supboard looking for stingrays. So there's a lot of good parts to being a marine biologist. But as I said, there's also some not so great parts. That is a workout. So what are some of the sucky parts of being a marine biologist? And I'll start off with things that you guys probably already know. A, it's really, really difficult to find a job. Most of the time you're going to have to move towns. If you're lucky enough to find a job, they're really competitive and really hard to find. B, if you do find a job, it's most likely going to be contract. It's really, really hard to find a permanent job. Most of them are contract positions, so it's going to be short term, limited job security. When most people think about being a marine biologist, kind of the holy grail job is working at a university, either as a professor or a lecturer or a researcher, because this is often associated with as a permanent position. It's got good pay, so that's kind of like the holy grail. But because of that, they are the most difficult jobs to get. And you're really, really lucky if you land one of those. Then, even if you do land that dream job of working at a university as a professor, you've got job security, you've got good money, it's still not fantastic, at least not for me. What I mean by this is, so I've been reading a book called Outliers, which is like the stories of people who find success doing various things. And in the book, the author states that for a job to be fulfilling and satisfying, it needs to meet three criteria. You need to have a level of independence. You need to have a level of like creativity or ingenuity, and there needs to be a direct link between effort and reward. So when it comes to being a scientist, a marine biologist, a researcher, a lecturer, working 
for whatever, let's just say for in this case at a university, the first two are easily met so you have a lot of independence you know you're a scientist you're doing you're running your own research projects you are using your brain you're thinking and so that ticks the creativity box as well like science it's it ticks those two boxes very easily where it doesn't necessarily tick the box at least not for me is when it comes to the link between effort and reward so as a scientist let's say for instance like as a lecturer or a professor at a university how your success in your job is measured is through publishing papers um, so the saying goes publish or perish you have to publish your science in scientific literature for other scientists to read and that's how your success is measured and that's great because you're adding knowledge you know to the body of worldly knowledge but does it really actually make a difference and in my opinion no you're just putting knowledge out there and it just sits there it does nothing so as a scientist you actually need to go beyond publishing and you need to do public outreach you need to speak to government officials you need to try and change le like legislature in order for your work to actually make a difference but you're not rewarded for doing any of this work in your job so then it feels very unfulfilling or it feels very unsatisfactory because you're doing all this work essentially like for no reason in your job but that's what you want to do in your job I don't know it's just it's a bit of a weird situation like I think the whole science realm really needs to change especially in today's day and age you know we all work in some kind of conservation sphere we're all trying to make a difference because everything is so screwed and that's for me where the reward lies but that's not where my job tells me my reward lies i don't know if i'm making sense i think i'm going around and around in circles but there's there's no link there between effort and reward that's basically just what i'm saying at the end of the day I just saw my first stingray in I don't even know how many months. I think the last time I saw one was January, maybe. So to conclude and summarize, what am I actually getting at? What I'm saying is that for me personally, the main reward of being a marine biologist is to actually make positive change in our world and in the ocean specifically to actually work towards protecting the ocean. But if I want the creme de la creme job at a university, which has good pay and good security, it means most of my effort in that job is not going towards that reward. So. Should you become a marine biologist if you're passionate about the ocean? Absolutely, freaking lutely but just know that there are some caveats involved. And with that, I hope you all have a very happy day.